Hello everybody. Now we have something to ask you. Have you ever been with someone next to you that you are talking, everybody's talking and all of a sudden you smell this horrible odor and you realize it's the person next to you talking that has an amazing bad smell coming out of her of her or his mouth. Well, that is called bad breath. And today, that's our topic. So what is what causes the bad breath? Bad breath, before anything else, is about bacteria, accumulation of bacteria in our mouth, lack of hygiene, uh, hygiene in here, no brushing our tongue, no brushing well our teeth. However, there is a lot of people that they just love to eat a lot of onions in certain cultures, a lot of garlic. Garlic is excellent for nutrition. And the patients may have also liver disease, kidney disease, throat infections can cause this problem. Another cause of the bad bread is maybe everything is about the accumulation of bacteria. So bacteria we have in the mouth and then the food comes to our mouth, our tongue retains some of this bacteria with the food. The food starts decomposing, stay on the teeth and the tongue, and the bad smell comes out. And remember, our first place where the food comes in is the mouth. So when these bacteria are consuming little particles, they start decomposing itself so to be digested. And this is what has happened. So remember, a big amount of garlic, onion, strong spices. Also the coffee can cause these problems. They are um, volatile compounds that temporarily can cause bad breath. Sometimes you brush and, and this is gone. If you don't eat a lot of onion or a lot of garlic, when you brush, it will be gone. So, but also if you have a throat infection, advanced sinusitis or amygdalitis where you have a pharyngeal problem, can cause you a bad breath if there's a bacterial infection. In this accumulation of bacteria in the mucosa of the mouth can cause the bad breath. So it's ingested and the smell is like a sulfur. So if you have also gum disease, you have not brush your teeth, you have calculus, your teeth have been destroyed, and the gums, look how the gums start deteriorating from normal to getting a little bit inflamed, to getting gingivitis, periodontitis, and periodontal disease where the bone is lost, and the patients don't brush correctly the way I give in my brushing technique. However, you have to follow, remember, brushing between the gum and the tooth and you brush up six times. Between the gum and the tooth and up six times. So between the gum, if you don't do this, when you don't go in between the gum and the tooth, bacteria gets in there. And when they have these spaces, we have this, this uh, type of brush that I found from a company, it's a new company that I, I like it a lot for patients that have a space, have furcus spaces, or they have braces also, they can use this type of brush. And also, if they don't floss correctly, how we're gonna talk about it, if you have this type of brush, then you can go in between the teeth and place it between your teeth and when you go there, you know, you go very soft in between them. Very soft to the point that you can clean anything that is in between the teeth. The point of the matter here is that also using a rinse that I'm gonna tell at the end, is gonna help you a, a mouth rinse for this. If you cannot floss easy, you can use this floss to floss this way. This is a new device I got from this company also. It's amazing. And you can go all the way to the back. It's easy the flossing and bring the food back. And it's cheaper because you start putting here your floss. When you finish, you change it. So uh, this is part of our treatment. And I deviated on that. There's another cause that I wanted to mention. People that use a nigar, you need to know how to brush your nigar. Place it in, in a compartment with water. In a, in a glass of water, and then you can put there a dissolving tablet that are for cleaning uh, dentures, they sell it in the pharmacy, and you can place it there at night, that's what I do, 
And that's your Niagara will be taking care and don't cause you bad breath. The same for a snor snor guard or dentures. If you have a decay, this is small decay, even this, this small, the decay, you can have the decay when it's this size is worse, okay? If you have a cavity and the cavity has this size, then of course you're gonna have a bad smell because bacteria will accumulate and will live for free here. The small cavity, not that bad, but it still will give you a lot of bad pain. So when we follow this, you're gonna have a very good treatment for, for, for your bad smell of your mouth. If you have liver problems or you have, and that is giving you, you have to see your doctor, your physician, or uncontrolled diabetes, and you have a mouth dry because of the medications, you have to use rinses that will stimulate the saliva and drink a lot of water. And the ketone diet, the greasy diet with no carbohydrates, remember, drink a lot of water to avoid uh, dental problems and a bad smell. So again, to prevent, you're gonna have a good oral hygiene, your flossing, your brushing, and you're gonna have a tongue scraper for your tongue. That's the best way because why the last, the posterior part, the last part of our tongue is the worst part and is where all the bacteria keep their, uh, their problems. So right here every night you have to with a scraped tongue, scraper for the tongue to remove the bacteria. And you have to stimulate the production of, of, of saliva by drinking a lot of, of water and check with your physician what is what is causing you uh, the worst. You cannot treat bad breath if you don't stop the keto diet or if you don't clean correctly your mouth or you keep doing, uh, taking a lot of uh, spices. You, there's a doctor, Dr. Joseph Nemen, who has been offering these treatments for, for bad odor. He has a machine. It's, this is a, a machine called Halimeter, and they measure with this machine how is your bad breath. They have another, another machine, it's called the Bana test, where you blow air also, and they check the amount of enzymes. And they have another where they swab with the gauze and see what is the amount of bacteria or bad breath that you have. But at the bottom line, follow the guidelines, brush your teeth, your tongue, your, your floss your teeth, check with your doctor, your rinses, there's a rinse with peppermint oil I just have offered from a company, I'm sure there's on the pharmacies, it says peppermint oil for oral rinses, and any rinse for, for um, dry mouth will help you to avoid bad breath. Bad breath. So there's a, a lot of, um, in the pharmacy you can see for bad breath rinses, you can also have that. But remember, go to your dentist every six months and your physician if you have another systemic problem. Thank you.